Welcome back to Unit 3, Transnational Climate Governance. In this lecture, Karin Beckstrand asks how climate discourses and power relations have shifted in international climate diplomacy over the last five years. This lecture comes to us directly from Lund University in Sweden. Karin is professor in environmental social science at Stockholm University in Sweden. So Karin, what role does the discourse on climate justice play in international climate diplomacy and has it changed over time? This lecture discusses how discourse analysis can be employed to interpret how global climate governance is imagined by the multitude of actors present at UN Climate Conference after the failure in Copenhagen 2009. First, a discursive framework is applied to compare three discourses of climate governance articulated at the UN Climate Summit. Next, I outline how discursive struggles are played out by identifying three discourses. The climate mitigation discourse, the discourse of patchwork governance, and the climate justice discourse. By the end of the lecture, we will offer you a new reading of the Copenhagen Summit based on our discourse analysis. For many scholars, the failure of the 2009 UN Climate Summit in Copenhagen marked the beginning of a new era. The top-down universal approach to global climate governance modeled on the Kyoto Protocol has gradually given way to a more fragmented, complex and decentralized climate governance. In this new political landscape, climate governance appears as a more hybrid and dispersed practice involving multiple actors, arenas and sites, as Fari Botticelli has shown in his lecture. Most agree that the time of a single UN coordinated and legally binding climate agreement has passed. Global climate governance is instead characterized by institutional fragmentation, public-private collaboration and softer forms of rulemaking. UN climate summits may appear as expressions of sovereign power relations with states bargaining at the highest political level in pursuit of their national interests. However, UN climate summits can alternatively be framed as active political sites where ideas, norms and standards of appropriate conduct are debated, contested and performed. A discursive framework offers us a new inroad into the study of this fragmented climate governance, moving beyond interest notions of UN climate diplomacy. Following a productive account of politics and power based on Michel Foucault's work, discourse can be understood as a constitutive system of knowledge that gives meaning to the physical and social world. Discourses offer cognitive maps for concrete forms of political action by defining problems of government, by determining political goals, and by specifying areas of intervention. Let me explain in more detail what discourses do. First, discourses identify characteristics way of seeing, talking about and constructing the problems to which climate governance is directed. Climate governance is now understood as a problematizing activity. Secondly, discourse analysis identify the normative ideals or principles that inform governance, for example, freedom, justice, economic efficiency. Thirdly, discourses concern the means by which climate governance should be enacted. Fourthly, discourses define who should act on a problem. In our research, we have identified three discourses that are underpinned by radically different understandings of the nature of climate problem. How did we find these discourses? We combined participant observations at UN climate summits with a close reading of official negotiation outcomes. We also looked at position papers by governmental, market and civil society actors present at the UN climate summits. These three discourses are the discourses on climate multilateralism, patchwork governance and climate justice. In the discourse of climate multilateralism, states should address the global climate crisis in a collective manner, 
It contains different claims about which temperature targets, atmospheric concentrations and emission targets should guide intergovernmental collaboration. Climate change is here represented as a globally shared problem with potentially catastrophic planetary consequences. The discourse of climate multilateralism is informed by a number of normative principles that guide effort sharing in a new climate agreement. Resting upon a sense of urgency, the multilateral discourse calls for concerted action by all states. However, the discourse of climate multilateralism also recognizes states' common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities. A future climate agreement will commit all major emitters in the north and the south to a legal obligation to reduce emissions. Yet, the discourse of climate multilateralism affirms developing states' moral right to financial support. The discourse of climate multilateralism assumes that a new climate agreement should be organized around negotiated targets and timetables for emission reductions. However, the multilateral discourse has gradually come to embrace the intended national determined contributions or INDCs for national action. While the voluntary nature of the INDCs marks an important step away from the Kyoto Protocol, in this discourse they should be reviewed according to shared rules for monitoring, reporting and verification. The discourse of climate multilateralism is state-centric in the sense that it views the state as the appropriate locus of climate governance. Hence, the discourse of climate multilateralism frames the state as the primary agent of climate governance and the UN as the epicenter of global climate policy. As such, it differs significantly from the discourse of patchwork governance explored next. The discourse of patchwork governance envisions that effective climate action emerges from bottom up through local, civil and corporate initiatives. In light of the current gridlock in climate diplomacy, it challenges the UN as the center of global climate policy. The discourse of patchwork governance represents climate change as a problem nexus, a diversity of interrelated problems tied to transport, food security, forestry, consumption patterns and energy security. This discourse is informed by a win-win rationality that highlights synergies between economic growth, development and climate protection. The patchwork discourse understands climate change abatement as an opportunity, creating new green markets and jobs and benefiting other policy areas such as health and energy. Rather than being the primary institutions for responding to climate change, the UN is represented as a platform for facilitating societal low carbon development. Several characteristics of presenting the solutions to climate change are related to the patchwork discourse. First, it is a political rationality that shifts focus from legally binding emission commitments to low carbon development. Secondly, governing through partnership is an element of the patchwork discourse. Club models for international climate cooperation, such as smaller negotiation venues, such as G8 or central modes of governance. Finally, participation of citizens, stakeholders and civil society are important normative ideals. In this discourse, women, youth and indigenous people are represented as the most vulnerable actors to climate change. Following this ethos of governance, the subjects of climate governance are many and diverse. All of them have a role to play in the transition to a low carbon society. The discourse of climate justice is manifest in protests, direct actions and demonstrations inside and outside the UN climate summits. This discourse stems from a long tradition of green radical thought that has emphasized the necessity of a fundamental reorientation of economic development, consumption patterns, to uh, realize a more just world order. The climate justice discord is defined by the slogan, system change, not climate change. It is a discourse that represents climate change as a structural problem generated by the global capitalist order 
that commodifies nature and ecosystems. The climate crisis is inseparable from larger north-south issues of poverty, trade, justice and debt. A key tenet of the climate justice discourse is the critique of global capitalism. Central to the ethos of climate governance is that climate crisis demands far-reaching transformation and break with the power structures that cause climate change, hunger, poverty, patriarchy and colonialism. The critique of carbon markets makes the radical climate justice discourse distinct from that of patchwork governance. The climate justice discourse advocates popular sovereignty where the agents for transformational change are alliances of environmental grassroots movements, indigenous people, labor unions and women. The main subjects of governance are the poor, the vulnerable and marginalized communities who are suffering from the worst impacts of climate change. The climate justice discourse calls for an equitable and democratic representation of vulnerable communities in international climate policy. Our discourse analysis offers us a new way to read climate governance after the Copenhagen Climate Summit. We don't understand Copenhagen as a grand fader that leaves us with the prospect of being legally bound to a world of four degree warming. Instead, we reframe it as a problematizing event where established ways of knowing and governing climate change were called into question and new standards for the conduct of global politics emerged. Discourse analysis is a tool that allows us to open up these competing political rationalities. Rather than representing the road to a new climate treaty as one predetermined by narrow state interest or geopolitical rivalry, discourse analysis helps scholars of climate governance to unsettle and rethink the ideas that currently define the realm of the possible for climate politics. Discourse analysis emphasizes the plurality and discontinuity of political rationalities in the post-Copenhagen era. Thereby, it helps us to create new options for thought and new possibilities for action on the bumpy road toward a new global climate deal.